So, growing up, I had one of the most traumatizing childhoods around. Um, I spoke a little bit about this on my Instagram live where I talked about how I chipped my teeth at like, I don't know, six or seven and they didn't get fixed until I was like 11. And I talk a lot about how like... I don't want to like roast my grandma about this because y'all know she just passed away. But before she passed away, I began to go against the grain and just do what I needed to do in order to make my life what I wanted my life to be. And let me tell you, that woman did not like me. Um, have you ever been called like ugly every single day or fat or just whatever like I didn't even know what I used to look like I never used to look at my photographs and when I did I would see this like beast I had like what do they call that body dysmorphia I had like so I had to begin to reinforce myself and like love myself and like change my mind about what it was that I was doing but I promise you whatever it was I don't know why she chose to scapegoat me but no matter what I did I could do what she said and that wouldn't be right I would do what I knew was right and then that wouldn't be right and I finally just stopped listening to her I stopped talking to her I laid her bare one day before she passed away when I was living there yeah, about you know two years ago or whatever and after that point I finally found my strength and that's when I really started like diving into baby young baby young baby but before that it was just like trial and tribulation after trial and tribulation like oh my have you ever been like trapped with somebody and not able to like escape them and you need them because you're a child because I'm not you know I'm, I wasn't a child then but once I began to realize like this is never going to change like this is how desperate I used to feel as a child living here just <sighs> I don't want to make this sound sad because I know that there are people out here that like go through the same thing and you know there's a responsibility that we all have as those who are verified and who are leaders because um, that makes you a leader. It makes me a leader. And I don't want to say this to give you guys flashbacks or whatever, but when I was like younger, like six or seven, first grade, I used to think about dying every single day. I know how dark that sounds. And now that I'm like removed from that trauma and I'm able to look at it as um, as just like a conscious observer, I realized how dark that was and how dark my dark night of the soul was. I began going through a dark night of the soul like 30 years ago. And it just barely subsided when my grandma passed away or, you know. And so some of y'all are probably in the same boat some of y'all are probably in the same energy feeling those same experiences and I want you to know that you can overcome that like whatever like maybe you weren't an artist maybe you didn't jump out there and become an artist you know at 10 years old to, you know whenever you really felt the spirit tell you that you would be great maybe you couldn't do that because those around you did not support you but I'm here to tell you that you can overcome that and jump into it now I don't care how old you are are you 60 are you 65, 70? I literally just saw Oprah Winfrey go on her on her Instagram and she's literally a 70-year-old influencer because you never outgrow your 
platform. You never outgrow your career. You never outgrow your life's purpose. So you have the juice. You can do what you want to do with yourself, but you got to be brave. And that's not to say that you're not brave because sometimes for a lot of us that have gone through this, it's sometimes just easier and brave enough just being able to get out the bed and brush your teeth and wash your face. My edges ain't slicked, but my hair is combed, right? Like, I ain't trying to, I'm not trying to devalue myself by saying that, but I do want to point out that even saying something like that, like I was made fun of for so long in my life that that is more so normal for me. It's normal to devalue myself. It's normal to feel that way versus being like happy, joyful, and content. And so even to a certain degree, When I was going through the situation with my apartment manager, I knew that that was wrong. I knew I should not have experienced that. And that was truly my first time speaking up for myself and saying like, something here is not right and I'm not going to allow you to treat me this way. And um, and this is, again, not to roast my grandmother, but let's be real. When I was telling her about this and what I've been through, like she laughed at me and she told me that what I was experiencing was all a figment of my own making or, you know, all that, uh, not, you know, but she told me that it was something I had done to myself and it was equally as hurtful as it was infuriating. And then when you have somebody in your life that you can't talk back to because they're of an older, it wasn't even that she was older because I would talk back to my, I would defend myself to my grandma, but she wouldn't listen because older people of a certain generation don't have to listen to the younger generation. You know, it's it's disrespectful. It's blah, blah, blah. So I used to take that and I let that be what drove me to kind of be meek and humble and kind and not stick up for myself and things like that. And uh, I tell you what, I promise you, the day I saw my apartment manager filming me through my windows, all that was gone. It was a totally different thing that happened to me at that point that transformed me into um just who you see today like who you see today is absolutely not who existed probably three or four years ago and I'm still growing I'm still becoming who I have always been and it's totally and completely not what you probably are used to And I know that's scary to some people. It's even scary to me to see how many different parts of my personality are starting to come out of me now that I'm living in my truth. It really is kind of scary to me, but I'm excited to go down this journey. I'm excited to feel what I'm supposed to feel. And uh, I look forward to the future. And I'll stop. I'll end this by saying this. Um, When you have somebody in your life where you'll never be good enough, you just can't even try to please them. And I remember I wanted to trim my body up and just look how I'm used to looking and and weigh the weight that I knew was a normal weight for me. And uh, I remember exercising one day and my grandma took the weights and the exercise equipment away from me and told me that women were supposed to be soft and me trying to exercise so much was going to make me hard it was going to make me I don't know manly or something in her in her rationalization and I also, at the same time, once the weights were gone and I was eating all of this poor food that was being prepared for us, I realized that then she began to berate me for being fat. And so it was almost like having, and again, I was never fat. I know that, but I know that now, but being and and having something like that told to you your entire life simply because the person just needed a scapegoat or some place to throw their anger or their disappointment with the world that is really the the main thing that i'm really trying to express to you guys today that it's not your fault that somebody is like just doesn't like you for whatever ra- irrational reason or it's not your fault that like um it's not your fault that you were abused mentally mentally physically or emotionally 
It is, however, your responsibility to live your best life unapologetically happy and to find happiness in spite of all of the really um, terrible things that have probably plagued you for a lot longer than you would have liked. But today's day one.